Hi everyone, my name is PK and here in front of me are Varun and Suba who are clients of the Property Investment Accelerator. They're migrants from India, they're IT professionals living in Sydney and they've done tremendously well in their property investing journey. Recently bought two properties, one in WA and one in regional Queensland. But I think in this episode, we'll also talk about their mistakes. They've made a mistake previously during COVID they lost, I think it was around $80,000 in a property deal. We'll go through their, or especially perhaps Varun's love for quantum physics and how that relates to their property investing. We'll go through how they bought really quickly in Townsville within um, four hours of the property listing. And we'll also talk about how they've done a lot of this while overseas on holidays. And, and we'll just see where it goes. But this episode will hopefully bring not only kind of like you know, how they've done it, but real deep dives into particular tactics and strategies. So for those of you at home that are watching and listening, you can replicate that and hopefully avoid the mistakes that they've made, unfortunately, and replicate their success, which, um, you know, they're going again and again. So without further ado, thank you so much, uh, Varun and Suba. I know that you're a little bit um, perhaps camera shy, but I really appreciate you making time for this. <laughs> thank you, Peter. Um, well, let, let's let's start from the start. Like what um, you, you actually just recently told me about that sort of property blunder that you made. But let me ask the first question. You know, you are obviously migrants from from India to Australia. What has been your property journey like, you know, before you did the course? Sure, PK. So uh, probably I'll start first. <laughs> um, so as you said, we are first generation migrants moved in and we did not have much help so we were just exploring things by ourselves i still remember the first property that we got was a townhouse and it took a long time for us to save the deposit and uh, the reason why we bought the townhouse was just because our friends lived close by so we bought a property and uh, we lived in there for like probably five, six years. And we realized that it's not appreciating. And uh, when we bought the property as well, uh, most of our friends, like they were buying in Scofields in Sydney and we bought it uh, closer to the city, uh, thinking that it's easy for commute and all of that. And um, it's a townhouse. So uh, by that time when it was like six years and we were like, oh, this is not appreciating. And we could literally just see the difference between the choice that we made and the choice that our friends made. Mm -hmm. uh, Scopels was appreciating a lot, uh, whereas the town has the, that we had hasn't appreciated at all. Uh, so that's the first mistake that we made. <laughs> so we were like, okay. Uh, and there was also some personal situations at that point in time. So what we did was we rented that property and we moved to Stanmore. Uh, so when we moved to Stanmore, Stanmore um, it was a narrow house um, and that was for the for my son's school. We moved there and it was tiny, narrow, and uh, that was when COVID hit. So okay. we were like, okay, this is not helping. So we wanted a bigger space um, and that's when uh, we decided, okay, let's buy another property. And uh, so what we did was that's right at the start of COVID, uh, we started looking for uh, another property in uh, Western Sydney and uh, closer to a famous um, public school. Uh, so we were like, OK, let's go figure out what's going on there. And we ended up getting our uh, PPO, uh, mm -hmm. which also has uh, a granny flat to it, massive land, like as in block size, which is uh, closer to 1000 square meters and with a granny flat. Uh, so that was at the point of like start of COVID where most of the people were hesitant to yeah. buy a property and we were like okay we would go into the property check-in every week uh, and we were like okay let's it worked out for us the school was good uh, the community was good so we uh, chose that property and what happened was uh, we bought it for 1.3k uh, and it was like six mm. months, 1.3 million. 1. 3 million. And mm -hmm. in six months, it jumped from 1.3 million to 1.85 million. So mm -hmm. we were like, wow, this is so cool. It's a old property. 
<laughs> it's a whole property it was you know uh, all we did was just painted it added a fence and it jumped uh, up high uh, but in between that as well we made few other choices probably i'll let varun share that we selected a suburb very close to the city i would say just 5 kilometers away from right. the city and then we look for um um the apartment and one of the prestigious um um apartment builder is with uh, whom we went with the contract it's a um, um of the plan um uh, type so it was in 2017 28 2018 early 2018 uh, we did they sign the contract and person deposit has been done and uh, we been promised by the um builder saying that it will be released by 2019 late 2019 right mm -hmm. so back then we don't know when covid is hitting we are all excited waiting for this one then we got this and then again the excitement happened uh, looking at the western sydney airport being kind of a big news and then mm -hmm. there are property hypes going there so when i was assisting for subhas kasin for a property purchase and looking for property i ended up buying a property as well okay. i some a house and a land package again the settlement is around uh, late 2020 we were happy and then just entering into the covid which is where 2019 late 2019 2020 early 2020 border was down, closed down the settlement was nearing for uh, the apartment type property and then exactly i still recall those tough times it's on mid march the um, builder called up and said hey the, the property is ready let's go for settlement in mm -hmm. that is right so the situation the real situation i lost 20% of my um work time because of covid on each week basis so there was there's a loss in my income and subha had had a tough time in her work as well so then at the same time we put that property for valuation the valuation banks doesn't know how to react to covid it was sure. very new. and uh, looking at my present situation at work and income on all these things the bank came saying that oh, we are short of 150k by valuation right by we don't know what to do I was trying to juggle trying to react okay let's see some other um, agent who can sell the property so that we can recover from the loss the 10% uh, deposit we made because of the uh, border lockdown and we don't know what the fo uh, forecast is this was the house and land package uh, this was for the apartment this uh, is the apartment the city, uh, city and no no buyer was there and uh, we let it go and uh, we let it go on 10% of the deposit it's a big huge money for a, yeah. a medium price uh, um it's a premium apartment i should say because it's a premium builder anyway mm -hmm. for a three bedroom plus um one one study kind of configuration apartment and um yeah uh, the loss we made is is a huge loss and sure. um, honestly to open up um I, i personally went on to anxiety and depression because sure. of the loss sure and also it's all about the decision that I have made that the excitement that i had and the emotional excitement that i had without mm -hmm. factual data and um, luckily subha was subha was very supportive back then on my recovery and um, and uh, that's where i got into with my help of um, the gym coach and other people into the exposure to dr joe dispensa uh, jay shetty and all these uh, beautiful souls um which i will talk about that later sure. but that that's the that's the kind of a exit path that we took from that apartment the investment that we made from apartment with a huge mm -hmm. drop and then and then at the same time when i'm talking about the uh, the property in, in the western sydney next to the western sydney airport that was significantly delayed they forecasted the delay already and in fact all these builders they know you know everyone would have told they started bumping up the price because of the price variation and all these things all yeah. Yeah. went through and and that property came to a settlement in 2022 um yeah that was significantly um, um a delight um but 
by then we were settled in this property which is in a premium suburb and that's where we saw the value of the suburb selection sure sure come to the point of all these the week two the importance of the uh, course materials on week two and week three but all the factors if i recall or when i was studying the course i could just correlate what this property the current property what we bought the performance was doing what the non performance which is townhouse was doing yeah so was literally able to compare that and um, that's a profound experience i got when i through went through the course right right thank you for sharing that both suba and and varun and and obviously like what you've demonstrated is that <clears throat> property decisions are big decisions and whether you lose 10,000 80,000 200,000 whatever it is like they can really take a toll on on your mindset and on your self belief and anxiety and and all of that sort of stuff and i'm glad that you're you know you're come out the other side stronger and better but it's such a good lesson for all of us that you know just because and i know it wasn't booming back then but even now just because the property market is going up in a lot of different locations that doesn't mean that we should just you know put a blindfold on and just get in with fomo and and you know property is not guaranteed to just go up every single property goes up in australia that that's not how it happens and i think that's a recipe for disaster and i i just want to <clears throat> just if you don't mind go one level deeper because i what you're sharing is a a common common sort of story amongst immigrants and and i think <clears throat> everyone's guilty of it not just immigrants but especially migrants you know we come or you come to australia to sydney or melbourne let's say and there's a community and the community has you know a lot of influence on your behavior on your decision making because you're let's say relatively new to the country and if close people family friends colleagues whatever they are they say this suburb is great or you know buy this type of apartment don't buy that or buy a house and land package or don't buy interstate like what are you doing buying interstate sydney is the best city in australia you know i'm asking this question the question is you guys are a very educated and intelligent and um rational people and you know more than me that you know money is hard earned and we shouldn't waste it yet we still make decisions based on other people's opinions like can you just take me through your your mindset of listening to others versus even like forget me like put my course out of the question just listening to others making two or three property invest property decisions versus just settling down listening to your own intelligence your own mind and saying okay what do you i think would be the best decision do you understand my question here it's like that that contradiction right um, we i mean in short right um we were not educated at that point in time we were just it's kind of like trial and error trying to figure out okay let's go figure out uh this one so by that time we gave we pretty much made all the mistakes <laughs> that an investor <laughs> <laughs> uh you know um uh, shouldn't make like getting a town house getting an off the plan apartment and also the land and package um but i guess like uh that's when we thought okay varun we have done enough mistakes and um so we got the um, uh, one in uh, bokam hills which is the uh, ppo that we had with granny flat and that's that totally that's a turning point for us yeah we had totally shifted like having experienced so many uh, you know uh, up, mostly negative experience into positive experience that's when our focus shifted and we made like uh, 500k equity in 6 months we were like oh wow this is so good mm -hmm. and uh, how long does it take to earn this 500k and if so that means we have implemented this correctly in a way like the suburb is good the property is good the land component is good uh, the school closer to the uh, um, you know the house is good so we thought okay this is a good one but then uh, we were also that that so we have gained enough from our our mistakes that we made uh, that has primed us up and also we were like okay so education uh, educating ourselves uh was something we thought like it would be the you know is what was missing mm -hmm. and that's 
how I started, you know, like learning a lot of things and I bumped into your uh, Facebook uh, Facebook page. I mean, it seems like that principal place of residence and it going up by 500k, that is what instilled into you the confidence that actually real estate as an investment vehicle could work for me as well, even though you'd made some mistakes and uh, perhaps not had the best experiences. But the fact that you were willing to invest, I mean, uh, I don't know if this is true, don't quote me on it, but I think most people think the way to get ahead financially is to save, you know, save more and more and more and more, work hard, save, 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 save. But, you know, an astute saver will never be as far ahead as an astute investor. And of course, it's not a competition, but those are just the facts. And I think at least you had this mentality that I want to invest again. I, I do want to get ahead through some sort of investment vehicle. And now that your principal place of residence has done well, you presumably, you know, said, OK, let me go back into the real estate market and really learn this time. Was it I mean, obviously, I always talk about data and, st and stuff like that. Was it around this time, around 2020, 2021, that you kind of got into quantum physics? And is that the connection or the resonance that you had with my sort of narrative on YouTube or Facebook or or why did you do the course? Um, great question. So the, the exposure to quantum physics as against to Newtonian uh, physics or the model, um, that basically, uh, that kind of exposure was in uh, uh, mid of 2020 when I'm, I was trying to secure this property and it happened uh, using applying the principles as well. Uh, uh, but the, the real, um, real playground or I should say the sandbox happened personally to me. And uh, I was deliberately uh, using that uh, in, with your course. And uh, Subha will talk about how uh, she bumped into this um, this course because she already purchased, not to mention uh, um, um, a bigger, uh, another course as well to become a buyer's agent. And she invested the money there. Oh, um, I didn't know that, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> Then she came to me saying that, oh, we have this guy called PK and he has methodologies and strategies. Let's jump, let's buy this course as well. I was like, already there is something sitting there. <laughs> yeah, do what you paid for first. <laughs> There's another one. So uh, I'm meaning, I have to believe on people and their approach as well. So she has gone through your videos a lot of times. So um, she used to sit in course. So far, she listens to you. Uh, to your podcast at the bedroom as well and a lot of places so i am um, uh, not implicitly have uh, listened to it as well so that's that's where i i got exposure to your course and uh, and the plan was we both need do each week or each week study mm -hmm. sync up on every day basis very aggressive plan mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In work, I study, I learned week one, she learned week one, and, and I'm trying, still trying to digest it. She had moved to week three, so, so she, she she did week two and week Does three. that mean she's smarter than you? Is that what that... <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> but the way I do is I, I do that course or anything, I write it in my notes kind of stuff. So it yeah. was a lengthy learning curve process. So then I said to her, see, I'm bailing out. You go with your own pace. Mm -hmm. And I and then, and this is where the the aggression started because then she did the course, and she, I understood that she did complete she complete coverage. Then she started looking for property in QLD, and again, she was like, "Oh, uh, there's an offer. We need offer in mid six six hundred or uh, uh, a high six hundred kind of stuff." And she started pouring them much. Uh, Pouring the money, pouring the number um, in the kind of an offers. And I was like, I did the course, PK's course in first week for the first week content. It is very methodical, very systematic. There is a process oriented to it. So why Shubha is doing this? Or it could be that we are, the emotional factor is getting into picture. Mm -hmm. Then I took a step back. I think a weekend starting Friday evening, late, late evening. I just went on a marathon run and that's where the quantum physics applied. I was every minute 
every second I was into the mindset of PK is talking to me, PK is telling me, and I'm just questioning myself. When I'm into this situation, when I'm into the suburb selection phase, what would I do? What would PK will tell, talk about it? So those are the points that were coming on and resonating me, resonating, resonating my mindset. And in fact, I was putting, uh, placing my quantum physics model as well as where I was in that phase already. I was in that property selection phase already. I was in that negotiation phase already when I was doing the course week three, week four, week five kind of stuff. And um, I was, uh, people call me as very aggressive in terms of communication. So your course about behavior economics was very good in distilling me from that kind of aggressiveness in terms of how I should present to my present to the real estate agent, how I need to present to the prospective property managers in order to look after the property kind of mm -hmm. stuff. So, so those three days was still mind blowing for me, even if I think about it. So I did drives, a lot of drives as well to Temple. I was thinking about, about it. And every minute and every second, even I know at which second, what you were talking about, what topic you were talking okay. about. And um, and I don't know, uh, um, these are my notes um, that I took a printout of oh, it. Wow. It's basically the week four, um, how to conquer the property, week five, how to do the behavioral economics. And I make a notes as well, what I need to do it what I need to be very cautious about in terms of the property. So this is something which I'm sitting with me. Uh, you see how much of uh, squeeze I have made anyway for the two properties, but it's like sitting with me for six six months now since I I started the property, uh, the course itself. And, um, and I will keep it forever until my journey ends. I don't think it will end. Yeah. It's so inspiring for me to hear both of you because it really seems that you've, I mean, property investing can sometimes be seen as a, a side thing. You know, it's a vehicle by which we make money. But for you guys, especially perhaps you, Varun, it seems like you've imbibed the lifestyle of a property investor. Like you've really immersed yourself in in the concepts of of investing and the behavioral science of property investing. And I think that's a credit to you because property investing is not, it seems transactional, like yeah, every now and then we buy a property and hopefully they go up and hopefully we make money and retire early. But to actually retire early, to actually achieve that financial freedom, you do need to, um, you know, focus. You, you do need to live and breathe property because it's not just a transaction. Every three months, you might want to revalue it. You might try to get the interest rate down. You might want to do a small renovation, get the rent up. You might want to do this and that. Not that any of that takes a lot of time, but the more touch points you have, it's like in, it ingrains itself in your lifestyle. And, and one thing that I always hear other people say is like, and this is kind of tangential, is like if you want to get into meditation, don't just meditate five minutes a day because, you know, there's only so much benefit that you'll get from five minutes a day. And of course, there's lots of benefit, but you'll probably give it up because it's a hard habit to establish. But if you go on a retreat for like two days, three days, really immerse yourself in like a meditative retreat or a transformative retreat, then you'll get such a drive, such a taste for meditation. Then then after that, five minutes a day will be like breezy and you'll never give it up because you're like, I experienced it in such a deep way that this is for sure going to be part of my lifestyle. So it really seems like that is what you guys have done. You've really immersed yourself in property investing, all those notes that you made from the course, etc. that it will stick with you. And even if you experience ups and downs, which all investors do, you've probably already experienced most of your downs, you know, you're not going to give it up. You realize this is a long um, term trajectory and and it's worth it. I, I want you to give some advice if you can for people who uh, who perhaps have experienced hardship in real estate and maybe have given up on the thought that property investing is for them. Maybe their their borrowing capacity ran out. Maybe they bought a property that didn't go up in value. Maybe they're now heavily negatively geared because of interest rates um, the way they are. Maybe they had like tenant trash, the, you know, all these horror stories. 
And that kind of makes people think, you know, like property investing, fine. There's YouTube channels, there's people like PK spruiking property, but you know, for the everyday person, it doesn't really work. What's kind of your advice from a mindset perspective to folks like that? It's a great question, PK. Um, uh, and also you touched about how you ingrain yourself and how you change your personality uh, from the past memories and then mm, moving towards the future. It's not very easy. Um, I'm doing meditation. I'm doing meditation every day. And every day is a struggle. And every day is a different experience, so to speak. You and me both, yeah, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what I would say is, and um, um, when you have a question on confidence and question on um, how to do things, right, um, it's all about the belief system. And um, the belief system, and I have gone through a lot of um, mentorship calls also. If you have doubt, people say, and people, and um, uh, with all respect, they say, go and have a read about PK's course, go through the recordings, which is really great. But my starting point, and this is where I question Subhas, um, um, very aggressive word, integrity about how she understood PK's uh, concept and then trying to place an offer. The reason is it was very methodical. The starting point is the um, quantum wealth creation tool. That's the starting point, which is from week one. Mm -hmm. And again, on week two and week three, when you transition, you will start with, you will tra slowly transition into investment accelerator tool as well. These tool, these two are so much powerful. If I want to chop a log, I need the proper tool, which is X. And this is what I had. So I started with what my portfolio is. And then, as I said, I lived every breath with you on those th three days. When I was transitioning to the wealth creation or the accelerator tool, investment accelerator tool, I was able to visualize where I'm heading to. I right. don't know what those second, sorry, fourth and fifth properties are going to be, where it is going to be, how it would look like, but I was able to sense it. I was able to feel it using those tools. And right. the experience, you will get, get it before in hand, before the actual thing happens in your real life. And that's mm -hmm. what is, when I, when we call it as quantum physics, it's all about experiencing future things before it happens in your real life. And that, that, that has ha occurred. And today, even if I'm, um, if I need to have a look onto it, where am I heading to? I will go and look at these two sheets, right. which is well up, up to date. And I keep looking at, okay, what's happening kind of stuff. So that's a great thing. But um, how to overcome yourself the uh, from the hardships? Um, it's more of, um, more of um, I would say discipline is a very harsh word to, so to speak. But again, going through this is uh, the process and then revisiting the process again and again. I... I personally had the question, the doubt about um, this course on my first property when I was trying to secure in QLD. Though I was in India, I was questioning why it's not working. Why it, it is competitive market. It's a different, different magnitude of play that we need to make. But why is it not working? Again, it's a fundamentals. Again, we are going through the fundamentals. Where very well focused. Okay, what is that I'm struggling? First question is, you need to ask, which area am I struggling? Is it on content of week two or week four? Is it that, that I've selected the property, I have cornered out, triangulated all the suburbs, I selected the property, it's on the negotiation phase, I'm all failing. So, so in, my, in my second phase of this journey, what I was struggling is with the negotiation. And amazingly, and Shubha even uh, commends me for that, I my communication skill has improved a lot. I've established uh, such a behavioral change through your course, especially to uh, have a contact with a person who might ph we physically haven't seen each other. Sure. But establishing the relationship and trust with the sales agent and then getting into the flow, getting to, to their space and making the things done. 
And that's where this paper is not just for the property, but again, I can use it. I can prime it for anything else that I want to venture on. Sure, sure. Very, very well answered. I, th I think to, to re summarize what you said in the first part of your answer, you know, when you're struggling with mindset, it's like if you want to chop down a tree in the woods, you know, if you're just standing there without any apparatus, that tree's not going to get chopped down by yourself. So you need the tools. Of course, you refer to the tools in the course, but even if you're not in the course, you need to find the tools. You need to find the axe. You know, you have to ask people, ask mentors, there's Facebook groups, other communities. You have to ask for the tools because without it, you know, you can't manifest something if you're not actually going to put yourself in that field of, of activity and actually engage with the field. Being on the outside and what watching YouTube channels and a lot of content, that's not putting you sufficiently in the field of activity. You actually need to interact. And I think that connects with that second point that you made is that behavioral change. Of course, it's not just that, you know, someone who's a migrant that has an issue, um, you know, non-migrants will have that issue as well, being shy, not being able to build rapport with property managers, sales agents, et cetera, et cetera. But once again, if you identify that that's the issue, let's say it was, then that's easy to overcome. And the only way to overcome it is through action, is through practice. And then if you look at yourself now, um, Varun, you're, you're very articulate, you're a very good communicator. Um, Shubha, I just want to ask you one question, because as Varun said rightly, across Australia, it doesn't matter where you buy, it seems to be, you know, incredibly hot market. And obviously there are reasons for it. We're in record low listings level, probably never in history. And the demand is very, very high, not least because of the record migration um, in the last few years. When people struggle, Shuba, in, in finding, sorry, in securing a property, you know, let's say they've selected a suburb, um, and they keep putting in offers and they keep missing out. And then the the mind, the monkey mind tells them, this is too hard for me. I can't do it, right? And, and Varun, you made that point of, okay, well, let's assess where you're going wrong. Is it the, the suburb is just simply too hot and you have to go to a cooler suburb? Is it that you're not valuing these properties correctly? And so therefore you don't even stand a chance because you're lowballing too much? Is it because the agent hasn't have any rapport with you and therefore even if you're valuing it correctly the agent doesn't care about you or is it something else you know you have to identify the problem Shiba when I don't know if you were doing the work or if Aaron was doing the work but perhaps even if Aaron was doing the work as an observer how did you guys overcome that from a practical perspective because you yes you missed out on properties whether it's the WA one or whether it's the the Queensland one how were you able to buy in such a fiercely hot market yeah, so before we landed on uh, South Bunbury property in WA, we were, as Varun was saying, we were looking at Queensland uh, just because we were like, okay, we wanted to buy one in Queensland. Uh, so uh, I was, well, that was when Varun wasn't actively involved in the course, but I have learned most of your course and things like that. But then emotionally, I was attached to Queensland because I have made my mind that I wanted to buy something in Queensland. So I was like looking into it and making some offers for the property and everything. And it wasn't working because I, I was offering too low or probably the market was so hot in Brisbane at that point in time as well. So we were missing out. There was one in Deception Bay, which we loved it. And then we were you know, like hoping that would get through, but then uh, that did not happen either. So that's when I, that's when Varun saw me struggling and he was like, okay, I'll help you with it. Okay. <laughs> I started literally like studying your course and implementing it on side by side. So that's when the data pointed us to South Bunbury and we were like, oh, wow, everything was looking good uh and we would i would look into the pro uh, so he would do the research side of things the data side of things and then he will tell me that uh this is why i think this suburb is going to perform well over a period of time and the infrastructure projects as around it and all of that so he would give he would convince me with the data points and then I would then go look into the houses and everything, give a call to the agents and uh, talk through with the agents and everything. And when I saw that property, the uh, South Bunbury property, it was it just was advertise, advertised in the market. And I went to Varun and then I'm like, Varun, I think this is a great property. 
and uh, I will leave it with you. You do your uh, CMA uh, analysis and all of that. Uh, come up with your uh, price point and uh, let's see how we go. So uh, I was like, so this is ticking all the factors that we are after, like the size of the land is good, the property is so good because we didn't want to get anything that's very old and uh, we were a bit, you know, and even buying it interstate was all a very new experience for us because we would literally go into the property, check each and every corner of the property. So it was like, but your course gave us a lot of confidence in it, PK. So I was like, Varun, this is great. Uh, we need to lock this in. And I handed it over to him and uh, um, he, um, we ended up buying the uh, South Bunbury. And as he said... Oh, uh, sorry, She's, she is closing it off very simply, but it was such a pressure, PK because South Bunbury was not in my suburb selection list at all in my spreadsheet. Right. Eaton, uh, Australian, and few other suburbs were in my list. South Bunbury was not, but she came to me at exactly at um, uh, 5.30, uh, just before dropping the kid to music class. She said, I'm dropping the kid, do this work. And <laughs> so it was in 45 minutes to 90 minutes marathon run. Uh, because I did my flex my muscles with your course, with the, the process, I was able to get it done in 45 minutes. The suburb selection or suburb um, assessment was made through the tool. And then I was, then it is a fresh start for CMA as well, as mm -hmm. you know. So I was, I was uh, grasping the data for the CMA tool as well. And then comparing that data be this property again south bunbury didn't have a lot of um, data points there was not not much activity so how to apply the indexing as well yes. so to the point, when the hot market is there the indexing meaning i've gone through that course as well like a lot of mentorship calls people were talking about and you you have explicitly they made a particular episode about it about how to do this indexing don't don't just go with the data points and this tool itself yeah applied we applied this one and then i said this is the buffer to play with it's all up to you back then okay. I'm not the behavioral uh, economics yet back then so i was not confident to speak to any of the sales agent so i left to uh, shuba, shuba right right and by then as well uh, i wanted to mention this um by then as well we had a good wrap up with uh, mike akrami so he was yes. He wasn't our mortgage broker, but then uh, one of uh, the interview that you had with Prashant, I had some questions around renovation and things like that. So I reached out to him. So we were having a good, you know, uh, conversation with Mike Rakrami and he helped us so much as well. Like as in uh, what I also really, and he helped us with the uh, uh, property that we got in 25. I mean, the Townsville one, mm -hmm. uh, what I realized was having a right mortgage broker by your side is the key as well because yes. it helped us really you know work out our um conditions in the contract and things like that the finance conditions and things like that which made it quite attractive to the um seller and uh, that that was really helpful as well pk right right yeah big shout out to michael Krami. he's you know, as you guys know, he's he quit his job, I think, last year or something. And he I don't know how many properties he's bought, but he's such a fantastic client and a fantastic person who's very successful in his own right now. Um, OK, so so I, I really appreciate it looks like you did a tag team sort of effort and you're sort of dividing and conquering the, the process of buying property. I love to hear. It. I'm just conscious of time. I just maybe ask one one last question. Um, sorry, sorry go ahead. Yeah, Vern. Um, the um, I think the one of the uh, key takeaway from my side in terms of uh, dealing with hot market is not to lose faith, not to lose faith with the process, not to lose faith on the uh, content itself. Mm -hmm. uh, so in the same experience, um, I was like going uh, going round and round. Um, I strangulated four suburbs um, for QLD, the second property purchase. Then I expanded it to eight suburbs and I had those sheets as well. Mm -hmm. Then I, I just asked myself, is it something that I'm doing wrong? Let's go back to the fundamental. 
and um, indexing helps. And indexing is something, it's a kind of a data science and uh, you would never know whether you have done the right thing or not. How, how much of buffer are you adding? And is that correct? Or have I gone wrong? But again, by the CMA tool, by doing this, by understanding the slider, what percentage, is it positive percentage or negative percentage? Is it inferior or superior? Comparing that, we can surface up the, the data confidently. And that's the kind of confidence I got it in the second a journey, the second right. property. Right, right. Even, even the first property journey, I was a bit of like doing guest estimate, so to speak. But in the second journey, it was awesome to use that slider and to see where it is standing and then applying that indexing. So just I wanted to finish it off there that indexing is very important. And also the other touch points like creating the relationship, going and speaking with people and other things. But to me, um, indexing helped us a lot because we started, what is my starting buffer? And then what is the maximum? Okay. And then we started with middle range within the negotiation. And we were right on the call. Subha was telling, she was writing it on the paper while I was on the call, finalizing the price, the price point. We said, we will give 407. Done. Deal done. Okay. So that confidence and it was done in 15 minutes, so to speak. That's the fastest space I could secure a property. I don't know whether I can. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the thing. I mean, you're going through a lot of detail, but you know, the suburb selection was done in 45 minutes, although under time pressure, the CMA, the valuation was done um, in 15 minutes. All these things haven't necessarily taken a long time, but they've just required like rewiring of your brain perhaps and, and a lot of focus. Um, obviously, you've now got those two properties you bought through the course. They're yielding, you know, 6% plus. They're good affordable pockets under 500K. They're rising in value on, on a daily or I should say monthly basis. It's been a journey. I don't I don't want to say that it's all been smooth sailing. You know, there's been a lot of um, self-growth through the process. But looking back on it, like, are you happy that that you did the course, that you bought these properties, even though, yes, there was work involved? Or in hindsight, would you have rather, I don't know, bought property in Schofield? Or, you know, you did that buyer's agent course, I think you mentioned before, had, had just outsourced it to a buyer's agent. Like, are you happy you went down this journey? Um, or, or do you think there would have been a better way to do it? Um, I will start it and I will lead it to uh, Shubha. Um, even if for the second property, Shubha went in for a bias agent. Even after getting exposed to your course, mm -hmm. we, did, uh, the, we did purchase a property with, through your course. Then to expedite things, the mindset was, oh, let's go through the VA. And we, we spent an uh, amount, initial deposit, to go and secure the property in QLD. And she will talk about that experience yeah. anyway. <laughs> that's a, that's but a very good again, one. But again, um, having said that, the question is, was it kind of tiring exercise? I wouldn't say that. I would I would be, if I would think of the rewarding experience that I have received. When you learn new things, you have, you enrich your neurons in your brains, and then it activates um, uh, more uh, positivity around it because you are learning something, you are disconnecting from the past behaviors and then enriching your experiences. So that's that's how rewarding it is for me. And uh, to me, um, there are a lot of um, aspects about your course and content, but I have to talk, talk about data. People talk about data, data is gold, data is now in the next oil kind of stuff. But you, for a real a layman person, how can I leverage the data? There are so many data points. People talk about core logic and other things, but I don't know how to use it. Uh, being an IT professional, I, was, I, don't, I don't want to name the, um, the industry, uh, but I have came from the same industry where you left. So I know how much of data points they use to see what would be the next best action for a customer. Sure. I've seen that, and that's where have seen the importance of the data and the data points that you were talking about. To me today, this is a learning curve. This is how I will enrich it. 
and I will enrich it and apply the same principle for any journey that I would step it and could be a kind of a role model for my kid as well to follow that. Wonderful. That sets the foundation. And that's what is the rewarding experience I got from this course. Um, uh, yes, of course, two properties, <laughs> but that's the output that everyone knows. But what is the implicit benefit that we get? And that's how I see it. I like that. Thank you for answering. Yeah, for me, PK, um, the challenge was we were time poor, both of us, uh, full time working, have lots of commitments, you know, like both at work and at home. So even though I have gone through your uh, course, which was really very interesting, I did not put it down. I was continuously going on and on and on. Uh, the challenge that was, it was just me at the start. And I was, you know, anything for the first time is hard. So I was struggling with it. And that's when one of our friends, they were getting a property in Queensland with a bias agent. So we were like, okay, maybe we don't have the time to implement the course. Maybe we'll, let's go with the bias agent. That And I was going through a course with an intention that I would validate what the BA is doing. So I was like, okay, I, I have gathered the knowledge now that I, I'm across this whatever the options that the BA is going to present me with, let me validate it. That was my intention. So, but when we signed up and when he got it, uh, got the properties presented to us, I realized that he wasn't adding much value. Uh, it was, you know, and your uh, statement of uh, no one cares for your money as much as you do. I realized it, you know. You realized it. <laughs> I realized that he, the property was either on the market for too long or if it is an off market deal, it's not it's not worth for what we are paying and so on and so forth. And that's when I was telling Varun, Varun, look, we need to take off the property journey in our control. BAs are not going to help us. We just literally need to do it ourselves. And that is when we started taking control of the property journey. Hmm. And that's how I pulled Varun saying that you know what no one is going to work for our money as much as we do so let's put in that effort right. and and we were really happy with whatever decision we have made uh, for the last two investment properties okay. um, just yes. to add that the uh, efforts what she's talking about once you flex the muscles as i said it is not going to take much of a time as you do uh, every day you're doing 10 push-ups then if you are increasing it by two it's easier and yeah uh, doing the same thing, it's much more easier as well. And that's how I see your course as well. Yeah. Once I've gone to that and have my hands dirty on it, and um, you ask me, Varun, I'm giving you five suburbs. You go and do this analysis and get me something. I should be able to confidently say, give me three hours. I would be able to narrow down a few properties, a couple of properties in each of the suburbs and give you a report. Amazing. That's Amazing. Spoken with so much confidence. I mean, these days, there are so many people who, a bit like you were saying, Shuba, actually do the course because they don't have time to do it themselves. They still do the course, then outsource it to a buyer's agent to be able to validate what the buyer's agent is saying. And, you know, sometimes they make the life really difficult for a buyer's agent. And the buyer's agent is like, I don't know if that was really worth $15,000. They're like dozens of hours I spent with this client. But you know that a lot of people do that, and that's they they use the the course as a tool, right? And and they do it that way. But others who you have that kind of mindset that you do, or realize that mindset through the ways that you've realized, they realize actually, look, I there's no shortcut to success. You know, even if I'm a high net worth individual, even if I've got you know, there's two salaries coming in, 200K, 200K, whatever. And I think that I'm pretty well off and my time is better spe spent elsewhere. Still, there's no shortcut to success. If I'm going to get out of the rat race, no one takes care of my money as much as I do. No one cares about me as much as I do. And I think <clears throat> the people who realize that and then dig their heels in like you did, they're the ones who really catapult themselves to success. And then in hindsight, they realize, actually, that wasn't that hard. That wasn't that, um, that time consuming, a bit like you're saying, Varun. <clears throat> but rather, I just needed to flex my muscles. I just needed to actually go to the gym. And then I realized I actually love the gym. You know, now I can't stop going to the gym. That That's what it is. It's just the gym for the mind. You know, first 
time you use it, it's like, oh my God, I can't lift that weight. But then after a while, it's like, no, all I want to do is lift weights. <laughs> but look, it, we're going on and on. So I, 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 I do want to be conscious of, of time and wrap it up. But there was so much more that I wanted to cover that we didn't get to, but I do want to say thank you so much for, I know you're not, uh, you know, you're a little bit camera shy. You're not, this isn't like friendly territory for you to be like doing this interview. Thank you for, for doing it. Thank you for sharing your journey, your ups and your downs, your struggles and your successes. And I think most importantly, the mindset shifts that you've had. And I think there'll be a lot of people, probably thousands that will get benefit from from hearing what you've said and hopefully we'll try to emulate what you've what you've achieved and i always say look there's more than 100 um of these types of client results on my playlist client results playlist on youtube but honestly for me it's not about that anymore i don't really care if you know anyone does the course or not but i hope that people watch this listen to this watch all those other sessions to gain knowledge and inspiration from people who have been there and done that and then do it themselves, do it DIY, even without me if you want, but at least do it because in 10, 20, 30 years, you won't regret it. But before we, we finish off, anything that lastly you want to say, guys? Yeah. No, I, yes, thanks I, again. I'm meaning my sincere gratitude to you and the community that you built uh, because um, the course is a starting point, but the community helped us a lot. I have to thank personally and my sincere gratitude to them, the professional response uh, that we get from them and the honest response as well. And there are a lot of enablers as well in the community, which I don't know how we categorize them, mm -hmm. but they are amazing. And um, it's not possible um, without them as well. And what the tool that you have provided through this course, which is the community itself and access to the forum and access to the lifelong mentorship calls recordings is amazing because of course my neurons will go into an hibernate state <laughs> after a, after a break then i have to activate it right these um the portal itself is enabling me and thanks to you pk i love it yeah like the, the i could never have expected the community would become what it is and like rightly said you pe meet people like mike and so many others that are absolutely enabling, you know, overcoming of blockages and, and hurdles. So yeah, well, well said, but thank you again, Varun. Thank you again, uh, Shubha. And thank you again, everyone for watching or listening, hit the subscribe button, give it a like, and I'll see you next time.